Recently, I've been seeing a lot of people posting their budgets in a flowy and colorful format known as a snakey-matic diagram, and today I'm going to show you how to build one for yourself. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Reese, and today I will be giving you a tutorial on how to use this pretty impressive tool, which will help you visualize and represent how your money coming in through your income streams can be visualized and flow into your expenses and outgoing costs. So with that being said, let's jump straight in. The website that you're looking at right now is called Snakeymatic and was built by a man named Steve Bogart. I have put a link in the description down below to the website. So if you wanted to tag along as I build my own chart, which will be the example for today's video, I'm going to say definitely do that because learning by doing is a great great way to get an understanding of how something works. And before I go any further into the tutorial, I'm going to get it out of the way right now. If I could quickly get you to hit that like and subscribe button down below, it really does help the channel grow. I really do appreciate the support and it does not go unnoticed. So thank you for taking your time out of your day to quickly do that. Now let's jump straight back in. So let's begin with the basics. There are really only a few things you need to know before starting. Number one is that for this chart to work properly, you need to ensure that the numbers are equal by the very end. As in if $5 was deposited into your bank account, you would expect to see $5 when you log onto your banking app and check the account balance. What feeds in as an input must equal what comes out as an output. So starting with this box here on the left called inputs, the developer has been very kind and put some notes in here, which is what's giving us this pre-populated chart on the screen. I'm going to remove everything inside to begin with to start fresh by deleting all of the text in this box. I'm going to be building out a chart to represent my financial situation. So as an FYI, that is where the numbers in the chart you're about to see come to life are being taken from. And to make this tutorial a little bit easier, I did a bit of pre-planning and worked out how many levels I would want to go down for my chart, which made it much easier when putting the flow of the chart together. I ended up with three tiers or hierarchies. So to begin with, I'm going to add a comment to this input box, which will act as a note for the organization of my chart and won't actually be a part of the final diagram. To add a comment, you want to add either two backslashes or an apostrophe before writing anything. It could be a sentence, a couple of words, or just one word to make it a title. And here are the examples that might show you or indicate what a comment looks like. So the first one, my name is Reese with two backslashes and the second one, apostrophe, hi, my name is Reese. If I click on the show diagram, it's not going to appear with anything because they are just comments. So my first comment will be an apostrophe tier one. And then I'm going to add a few spaces and add the other tiers as comments as well for later in the build. Okay, so from here, we want to actually start populating our chart with actual content. The first thing I want to add is the money coming in. So to do this, I'm going to add my monthly wage, monthly income from my properties and monthly YouTube revenue. And to do this, you will need to break the information into three sections on every single line. Section one will be what is the source of income? Section two, how much? And this is contained within square brackets. And section three, what are the outputs? So as an example, the first line will read wage. That is my source of income, followed by a set of square brackets with a value contained within. That is how much and then the output which will be my monthly income and if i click show it will populate the numbers and text on the chart and now i'm going to quickly go ahead and add the other two inputs as well being my rental income and youtube revenue and click show to display that flow and there it is. Now, as a quick note, you can change the color of both the nodes, which are these things here. I'm gonna shuffle one just to show you. And you can also change the color of the flow boxes being these things here. To change the color of the flow box, you need to add the hex color code text at the end of any line that you want to change that color of. So to make each flow box the same, I'm going to add these characters here being 63ACE5 at the end of each line and click show again. And as you will see, they have all changed to a bluish color. Make sure the hashtag is in front of them as well. Now to change the nodes, it is a little bit different, but not overly complex. To set it up, I'm going to add a few more comments down below the last tier of where information will be stored. I'm going to call it node colors and then add the tiers below as comments. To change 
change the color of the existing nodes, I'm going to add a colon followed by the name of the input followed by hashtag and the hex color code. And if you're unsure what hex color codes are, all you need to do is Google hex colors and there will be a million resources available online. Simply copy the six character code with the hashtag in front to access that color. And for the colors you'll be seeing popping up in my chart in today's video, I've grabbed them from this handy website here and I've linked it down in the description below. So feel free to use that if you wish. Okay, let's continue to add the next level of information being tier two to our chart, we need to start by stating the input. That will be the bottom level of the tier below. So in this example, the text will be monthly income followed by our square brackets with a value in and the output. So as the example, again, for my first line of tier two, I'm going to put in what I'm paying tax on a monthly basis. I'm going to color both the flow box and the node as well using this red code here. From here, I'm going to copy paste in my other flows for tier two from my saved text file to save some time as well. The colors I've also selected and put into the text file as well. This is now really a good time to note two individual things for this video. Number one is that the website resets everything the second you leave the website being snakey-matic. So make sure you are taking a copy of your text and saving it in something like a notepad on your desktop so you don't lose your work. The other thing worth mentioning is that you may notice the chart already looks really crammed. You can actually change the size of the chart or the diagram by changing the parameters in this box here titled diagram size and background. I'm going to change the width of my chart to be a thousand pixels and adjust the borders to be 25 pixels each. Don't worry too much about adjusting the flows just yet. We will get to that once we have all our data on the page. Now, some of the tier two flows won't have anything coming out of them, which is fine. For example, the tax flow is as low as I need it to be. Whereas my monthly personal expenses can be broken down into another tier that's going to be tier three. And this is also a good time to show you why our numbers really need to add up. I'm going to add my first input from my personal expenses and the value of it in the tier three being monthly petrol spending. If I scroll down below the diagram, you'll see this yellow box here. It shows for my personal expenses, I have a total of $467 being spent, but as an output, I only have $92 coming out. This means there is a difference in $375 in this flow and what is going in is not equal to what is coming out. So I know there is a discrepancy. To fix it, I either need to double check my numbers if petrol spending was the only expense I had, or I need to add the other flows that belong to the parent flow being personal expenses, which is exactly what I'm going to do now, where if I scroll down, you will see that there is no longer a yellow box, which means everything is in equilibrium, which is a good thing. This is a really useful way to sanity check that your flows are correct. As you can see as well, I have accounted for most of my monthly bills and it provides a pretty nice snapshot. Okay, to finish off tier three, I'm going to add the expenses coming from my two properties and color the nodes the same because I like it all to be consistent. That's just me, it's a personal preference. And that is the content I want to display for my chart. Once you get to this point, I would recommend copying all of your text in the input box into your notepad and saving it so you can play around with the visuals later and not have to worry about breaking your diagram. All right, now let's take a look at what you can do to play with the aesthetic. In the two boxes labeled nodes and flows, you can change a whole bunch of parameters of both your nodes and flows, which will change up how your diagram looks. I suggest having a play with it to find what you like as it's a purely aesthetic and not functional feature of the chart. And the boxes below can also be expanded, which offer further tailoring solutions to your diagram. For example, in the labels and units box, you can add prefixes to your units. So in my instance, I want to add a dollar sign to show that the units I'm working with are dollars and not euros. And the layout options box allows you to reverse the diagram of the chart if you wanted to. Now, once you You've finished building your diagram, I would definitely save all of the text into your notepad as I mentioned earlier. This is good practice and something I would highly recommend doing. Then I would select in the website 
build a snaky diagram, which will bring you back to the very beginning page we started with. And the reason that I would be doing this is because the builder is very good at organizing your flows for you. Just before we move on to the last expandable box down the bottom here, you will want to know this first. You can move everything within your diagram around by hovering over each node and dragging them around into the space you desire them to be. You can also hold the shift key on your keyboard while holding onto a node and move it just in the vertical plane or the horizontal plane as well, which allows you to keep everything in line with itself. So now knowing this, finally, the export diagram box. This box allows you to export the chart you have just built as a PNG or as actual SVG code. For those who don't know, SVG code allows you to paste your chart or diagram into websites. If you know exactly what you're doing, it's not something I'd recommend if you don't know what you're doing, but that actually will allow visitors to a website to interact with the chart. I would say most people who use this are going to be exporting their chart as an image, which is what the PNG option is. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And to get these exports nice and crisp, I'm going to adjust the diagram size and background box to say 1920 by 1080 and export both of them using the medium and small option, which is what lets me put this nice, beautiful image up here on the editor. And that is pretty much it. If you've watched this tutorial all the way through, I would expect that you can build your own snaky matic diagram pretty easily without running into too many questions or having too much trouble. Now to wrap today's video up, I've also added the text that I used to build today's chart down in the description below. So you can actually copy paste that and put it into the diagram builder on Snakey Maddox website and actually play around with things like colors, wording, and you can actually play with the diagram itself, or you might just be really nosy and want to see how and where my money is flowing in and flowing out. It might not be 100% accurate. I might've fuddled some of the numbers, but nonetheless, it is going to be a relatively accurate representation of my own situation. And if you're interested, feel free to use that. That's my gift to you. With that being said, that's where I'm going to leave you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope the tutorial was helpful. If it was, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Like I said earlier, it really does go a long way for the channel and I really do appreciate the support. And that's it. Hope you have a good day. Hope you have a good week and I will leave you there. Bye for now.